This is called a mosquito fish. I assume because that tiny little mouth comes up and it must do a lot of nibbling on mosquitoes. I already have one glued on a piece of wood here. Everybody unsubscribes because no glue stick. The lighting's not working out too well over here for fun facts. First thing Wikipedia says about this fish is that it is not to be confused with the Eastern mosquito fish. So if you say mosquito fish, you're referring to the Western mosquito fish and not the Eastern mosquito fish. Only the Eastern one needs specified. I've already stumbled upon an incongruency with the lure I'm making and then the actual fish. The longest that these fish get is 2.8 inches. I think my lure is about six inches. The male's maximum length is 1.6 inch. I'm gonna shut that heater off. Sorry if you have a adverse reaction to disgusting blisters on people's fingers. I'm sorry. I burnt myself on plastisol. Along with being bigger than the male, the females have a gravid spot at the posterior of her abdomen. There's a black spot like right there on the females. Look at this. The name mosquito fish was given because Period. the fish eats mosquitoes larva, not the mosquito. Dang, I was wrong. The larva. I had to turn that fan off too. They were introduced directly into ecosystems in many parts of the world to lower mosquito populations, biocontrol, which in turn negatively affected many other species in the distinct bioregions. There's books written about this. Okay, it's a thing. So in Australia, there, there are uh, pests. There's too many of them. And it may have exurbated. Ex, exer, sir, acer, exacerbated, exacerbated. Wow, what is the matter with me right now? And may have exacerbated the mosquito problem in many areas by outcompeting the native invertebrate predators of mosquito larva. So it killed all the other things that eat the larva, you idiots. What are you doing? So yeah, it's kind of a fish that people are trying to have not get out and get into other waters, even though they used it at one point as a mosquito control thing, bio control. Okay, so people still use them. And India introduced Western mosquito fish in 660 ponds. That was in 2014, so it could still end up like Australia. So when it comes to the reproduction, it says within 16 to 28 days after doing the thing, they give birth to 60 other fish. The female gives birth to 60 young. And it only takes about two months for those fish to be able to reproduce again. They might be able to become a bit of a problem. These small and of a dull gray coloring with a large abdomen fish have rounded fins and an upturned mouth. I guess there is no way to segue into those facts, you know, just immediately saying things about this fish. Very descriptive things. The anal fins of the adult males are pointy. Another fact. It's very cold outside right now. Once in a while there's like an explosion in the framing of my garage. The mosquito fish is a member of the family, something I can't pronounce and not, I'm not gonna, but the genus name, Gambusia. Yeah, that's how you'd say that. It's Cuban Spanish, Gambusia, named after Gambusino, meaning useless, referring to this fish. Cuban Spanish people call it that because when it comes to its biological control of mosquitoes, it doesn't work very good. You just have a fish coming in and it outcompetes the other fish that were already doing that or there's only so many chances for those fish that eat mosquito to eat mosquito. I don't know, I'm not a biologist. How could you be certain of anything, you know? There's too many variables, it's nature. It'll like fight back, nothing's concrete. Even genes mutate. Wouldn't wanna be a biologist. What am I saying? This is fun facts about mosquito fish. Their native range, where they come from, is southern parts of Illinois and Indiana. Wow, through the Mississippi River and its tributary waters, all the way down to northeast parts of Mexico. Easier to find in shallow water, trying to protect themselves from larger fish. They're a very hardy little fish. They can survive inhospitable environments, and they're really resilient to low oxygen circumstances, or high salt concentrations even. They can survive in up to twice the salinity of seawater, apparently. That's pretty impressive. Think about breathing that for a bit, like that would suck. It can survive temperatures of up to 108 degrees Fahrenheit, so like hotter than your hot tub for short periods. That's hotter than a hot tub, right? 108. 212 is boiling. Wonder how long it can survive boiling water. 
Yeah, they're a really hard fish to kill and they reproduce really easy, but other fish do eat them. Definitely. Nice high protein snacks. It's just a little fish whose purpose was to eat mosquito larvae. Well, I hope you found that fun. Fun facts are over. Gonna get this stuff cleaned up. These fins is what I mean by this stuff. Then move on to cutting the slots and the bait. Have them marked out. Already did a couple. This is going just fine. Also, I think that the shape of this lure is gonna aid in the glidaciousness of its action and its purpose of existence. Huge, thin things like fins. I'm surprised I said that correctly. Tend to aid in gliding. So it's got a lot of that going on. And there we have some perfectly shaped fins with their little tabs that stick into the bait. That Lexan is a little bit thicker than that super thin stuff that I've used before. So it's gonna be kind of difficult making these slots, but that's the next step. Applying lots of pressure into wood with a really sharp razor blade with my fingers really close to everything to cut some slots. Yeah, you just gotta mash it up. Pass that blade through it a lot. Turn it into spaghetti. It's a college level bait making course. Turn the wood into spaghetti. Got my little scrapey tool out. Literally just a piece of brass. Didn't even use a piece of steel, piece of brass. Proving itself useful as ever. Look at it go. Looks like a little woodchuck digging out a little den. Much closer. These fish have obnoxious fins. That's, that's pretty silly. Goofy, man. The fins are in. They fit nicely. They are not getting glued in yet. We're gonna cut this bait in half. And even after that, they're not getting glued in. I'm gonna paint this, and then they're gonna get glued in. It's gonna be a bit. They need to remain pretty translucent too. As you can see on the real fish, they're that way. So I don't want them on the body when paint's getting sprayed. Able to go nice and deep on this lead hole back here because I raised that bottom joint pilot hole. That's why I put super glue all over those thin, dainty, pointy little things right there because I knew I was going to drop it and I did. Quarter inch holes for back here. I don't have reasons for why the holes are where they are. That's just where I think they go. It's a nice sharp bit. Lovely. Fresh can. Gonna put one of these in the back of the tail fan slot for drippage. Okay, lead's hot. This bait's getting some weight. Oops. 
This is a pretty small glide bait. Going with a bit thinner diameter wire. For the joint connections, that's pretty clean. Doing everything possible not to be too messy with this super glue and baking soda. Gah! I already did those. We got weight in this bait. I'm starting with white. There's a little bit of like orangish. Looks like it goes all the way to red. I think the illustration was just kind of going for a holographic effect, but I'm gonna do that too and hopefully achieve a holographic effect without it being holographic. I don't know. But it'll look good if I do that too, I think. Sunburst. Light orange. Fluorescent. Hopefully that does quite a bit. That, that's gonna be under clear coats and stuff and scales, so that's a good start. Okay, now there's some blue stuff going on. Mixed up some clear coat. There are places I cannot get the clear coat. Let's be careful. That's looking great to me. It's a nice dark base and it's going to have pearl colors over it. So it's gonna give it a lot of shine. That is a loud rotisserie. Did you guys notice how I just kind of threw the weight in there and didn't test it at all and started painting? I didn't even realize I did that. What the heck? I must have been super confident. I'm not gonna worry about it. I got a few other projects happening in here. What can I say? I get distracted. Really, I just set it on the workbench like that and it's like, well, the lead's in there. Let's cover up the lead holes and smooth them off and get this painted and, and I just, wow. It's gonna have a mystery action. That's exciting. We must first mask off the gills. This is masking fluid, and this is my designated masking fluid brush. It's good to have one of those with masking fluid. Gonna start the scales off with pearl white. More is going on the top than the bottom. There's quite a bit going on. And I added little streaks of blue off camera. Scale reveal. That's lovely. I like the color transitions. It's like the rainbow down there. That blue. I came under and over the fin and met up to one line on the back piece there. Time to show its face. I can definitely work with that. Nice and dark, build up the pearls. Really putting off the mosquito fish vibe. I'm gonna paint the tips of these fins in that manner. There's a little bit of blue towards the tips. And then they have that pattern, that ray pattern. Oh, duh. And there's that. I, didn't, I haven't painted that yet. Oh boy. This is one heck of a blotch in quite the spot. Okay, let's get this right. I'm glad I did the little tail. There's some crazy, weird polka daddy lines on these fish's fins. I could have been way more subtle with this detail on the fins of this fish. In real life, it is not 
this extreme, but it looks cool on this lure. My intention for this bait was to paint a 3 8 inch glass eye in a very simple yellowish silver paint scheme pattern. But look at this. Dead Meat Custom already makes a perfect one. Little bit of yellow. Yummy. That's a funky looking lure. I think that back fin is shaped really dumb, but that's exactly what the picture was. I don't have these glued in. They're just friction fit. In case there's anything like drastic that I need to change about this. I'm hoping it floats. If it floats, I don't have to worry about if it sinks and what the drop rate is and if the head's heavier than the tail and all that. It can just be a heavy float and sit nice and deep. Lots of water coming up the sides to impart its action. And yes, it's back to the bathtub. I'm sorry. It's negative one right now. I'm not gonna go outside and test this. I'm gonna go to my bathtub, fill it up with warm water, just out of spite for winter, and test this bait. That glide's nice. For being a short bait like it is. Those really big fins help stabilize some glidage out of this thing. Let's give it the chip score. What's the score, Chip? Hmm. He doesn't seem to care about it. Yep. It has a chip score of meh. Meh. I'm gonna glue that up and wait for the time where I can wake up early and get fish to blow up on this thing. I've been working on a lot of other stuff too. Look at this thing so far. Look how far out those gills go. And I got this thing going. I wanted a tall profile, flat sided, bluegill style. Been working on this thing. Look at the shape of that. Isn't that gorgeous? And the, just the overall. Look at that. Giant eye. I think that's 16 millimeter. This is going to be the cream of the crop this year, though, this winter. I need to get that in a mold. I just set it aside. I haven't worked on it since the video. That's it. On to those next baits. Exacerbated. Let's be careful. I'm glad I did the little tail. Turn the wooden spaghetti. 